Well, good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to the Barony Hall. It's a magnificent and fitting venue for this special day, a day which I know some of you have been waiting almost two years for. Two years ago, the COVID-19 pandemic changed all of our lives, and it had a profound effect on the university, changing the way we work, the way we teach and learn, and of course, preventing us from celebrating your graduation in person. We've worked hard over the last 24 months to keep our Strathclyde community safe while continuing to deliver a high quality education and student experience. And I've been hugely impressed by how our staff and students have responded and adapted. Now, with positive indications we're coming out of the worst of the pandemic and with protection measures eased, we're delighted to be able to welcome you back in person to today's ceremony. In a moment, We'll commence our special ceremony where our graduates will come up onto the stage and they will be capped, which is an ancient public rite of passage and mark of achievement. And it's a sign that you're part of a proud tradition stretching back to the Enlightenment when Strathclyde was founded. Now, once the ceremony is finished, you'll be invited to join us at a reception in our new learning and teaching building, which is up the top of the hill here in Rotten Row Gardens. But before we begin, let me just say to you, please savor this moment. It's been a while coming. And to the families, friends, and supporters gathered here, don't you be shy in showing your appreciation for our graduates. But short of coming up onto the stage here, but if you could really enjoy the experience and be enthusiastic, enjoy the ceremony, which I now formally declare open. I would now like to invite Professor John Quigley to present to you our graduates. My Lord and Chancellor, in the name of the university and the authority of Senate, I present to you these students for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for Research in the Department of Accounting and Finance, Mohammed Saeed Ibrahim El Magoub. <laughs> Elizabeth Grace Littlejohn. For the degree of Master of Science in Finance, Nanayahu Antwi Darko. <laughs> Tomislav Sikak. <laughs> Ho Fi Fu. Lucas Horseman. <laughs> Moses Lu Guiana Kazi Lima. <laughs> Manuel Nickel. <laughs> Mildred Mushia Omas. Patrick Wagner. Simon Wilfred. Chea Ying Yang. In finance and management, Declan Gorman. Louis Augustine Hetman. <laughs> Sidhi Sunil Main. <laughs> Ms. 
Chaimonides Pericles. In finance, financial technology, Christos David. <laughs> Luisa Mea de Carvalho. <laughs> In international accounting and finance, Jing Ji Chen. Georgios Voradias. <laughs> Yannick Welter. <laughs> In international banking and finance, Zainab Mohabed Fuwad Kasim Al Lawati. Farandi Luthan Makarin. <laughs> Lorenzo Pollegri. <laughs> Varun Shukla. <laughs> Konstantinos Zavalias. In investment and finance, Muhammad Arfan Buldansia. <laughs> Corey Dehan. <laughs> and Maria Isaac. <laughs> Andreas Licotrafitis. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Accounting, Michael Cotter. <laughs> Daniel Thomas Fletcher. <laughs> Abigail Elspeth McGregor. <laughs> you and Charles Clement McNally. Fiona Mulder. <laughs> Lee Gabriella Russell. <laughs> Catherine Ann Roisin Burns. <laughs> Daniel Jeans. Christopher Purdy. In accounting and business law, Cara Megan Quinn. In accounting and economics, Reese John Kerr. Matthew James Cole. Matthew McClelland. <laughs> Scott McCready. In accounting and finance, Stephen John Edward Armstrong. <laughs> Suresh Balkrishna. Sophie Bentink. <laughs> Rachel Kearney. <laughs> Ailey Louise Chapman. <laughs> Lindsay Margaret Sarah Craig. Rachel Francis Duddy.
Ross William Faulkner. Laura Mari Fitzpatrick. Chloe Guilfoyle. Andrew Stewart Gray. Candace Hughes. Jilly Johnson. Ella Margaret Kennedy. Ewan Lafferty. Callum Lang. Cameron Ennis McIntosh. Amy McKenzie. Cameron Marks. Lindsay McCall. Lucy McLaren. Jenna Miller. Ashley Eleanor Murray. Caitlin Murray. Martin O'Donnell. Liam James O'Neill. Paula Rose Queen. Connor John Rohde. Roisin N. Saravanan. Luke Scullion. Emma Margaret Shanks. Rory Michael Stark. Lauren Ann Stewart. Rachel Swan. Jun Tang. Eleanor Margaret Chuss. Sanjay Vijayan. Louise Wallace. Francesca Walsh. Jack Francis Williams. Emily Claire Woodhouse. Lauren Kathleen Wiley. Sadiq Ali Ahmed Al Lawati. David John Andrew. Stephen Boyle. Daniel Ming Hin Chuang.
Angus Barclay Fruit. Azar Hussein. Andrew Alexander Keir. Cameron David Mitchell. Patty Leonard Mukasa. Connor Gerard O'Brien. Thomas Smart. In accounting and marketing, Chloe Porter. In accounting and mathematics and statistics, Susanna Patrick. Craig Gamble. In economics and finance, Jack McCready. In finance, Mohammed Kamal Mohammed Al Lawati. Aaron Grisdale. Fiona Harris. Callum Jackson. Mark Linden. Callum James McDonald. Usin Mayo. Daniel Alexander McAllister. Sara Mubarak. Ali Rena Peebles. Rachel Ann Sharkey. Connor Virtu. Sin Wang. Christopher John Woods. Chloe Brown. Kieran Hines. John Lee, Alexander Robert Murison, Isabella Antonio Ross, Nide Sarwa. Jonathan Thompson. In finance and business analysis and technology, Luke Hughes. In finance and business enterprise, Greg Kelly. In finance and business law, Malik Suleiman Hamed Al Hashmi. Charlie's Kersley. In finance and economics, Angus Andrew Dandy.
Flora Louise Douglas. John Good. David Richard Hood. Ross Cameron Kerr. Jack Loban. Jack Lyon. Reese Mark McKenzie. Ewan Middleton. <laughs> Karen Pratapisin Patil. <laughs> Hugh Henry Robinson. <laughs> Joseph Martin Skivington. Megan Thomas. Robert James Thornton. Kathar Mohammed Fida Hussein Abdul Hassan Al Lawati. Eamon Raife. In finance and economics with international study, Nicholas Robert Vinogorod Wouters. In finance and human resource management, Juliet Ann Ayers. Rachel Helena Ramez, uh, Ramsey. In finance and management, Louis Benham Ajudani. <laughs> Jody Cullen. <laughs> Melissa Asiama. <laughs> Umar Riaz. Jingshan Guan. <laughs> Abigail May Spruill. <laughs> In finance and marketing, El Roshin Trinder. <laughs> In finance and mathematicals and mathematics and statistics. Laura McGuire. <laughs> Ewan Nile Robson. <laughs> Faculty of Engineering for the degree of Master of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering, Nile Hunter. Faculty of Humanities and Social Science for the degree of Master of Education in Professional Practice, Gavin Peter Cullen Mayer. <laughs> Faculty of Science for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, Heather Donaldson.
Well, let me once again welcome you to this special congregation. It's an unusual one because, of course, you've already received your degrees and you've graduated. But we were determined to offer all of our graduates the chance to come back here when the opportunity arose to celebrate your achievements in front of your families, your friends, your supporters, because it's undoubtedly the highlight of our academic year and we could not let this go unacknowledged. We wrote to more than 8,500 of you and we'll be welcoming around half of that number back here to Scotland, from across Scotland, to, from across the UK, and indeed from across the world. And we're doing this at 22 ceremonies. And I might say that you, the class of 2021, are particularly special in having faced the unique challenges brought about by the coronavirus pandemic. You've faced disruption to the way you've had to learn, to socialize, to sit for your exams, and you've gone out into the world at a time of unprecedented challenges. But in the face of this, you've shown courage, determination, resilience, and adaptability. And as you forge your new careers, the university's values of being ambitious, bold, innovative, collaborative, and people-oriented will stand you in good stead. In a short while, you'll be invited to join an academic procession when we leave the hall. This is a symbol that you're no longer students, but you're now full members of the academic community at Strathclyde, one that numbers over 175,000 across the world. And you follow in the footsteps of many graduates before, including illustrious alumni such as David Livingston, John Logie Baird, Dame Elia Angiolini, Baroness Helen Little, Baroness Annabel Goldie and Tom Hunter, to name just a few. Your friends, family and tutors here with you today are immensely proud of what you've achieved and you will have confidence in and continue to support your future success. So let's all show our appreciation with a collective round of applause for our alumni. I also know that throughout your academic careers, you will all have had the support and encouragement of your families, your friends, your supporters, and your teachers. Many of them are here today, and I'm sure that you're extremely grateful for their support. So let's take this opportunity to show our appreciation and gratitude with another round of applause. And similarly, all of our graduates have been helped by our wonderful staff who've worked hard to provide you with a first-class education and outstanding student experience and for whom your success is their reward. So graduates, please join me in showing your appreciation to them. Now your success and our success as a university is due to the efforts of our staff who are delivering our vision of Strathclyde as a leading international technological university that's socially progressive and makes a positive difference to the lives of its students, to society and to the world. Many of you I know are already pursuing careers or further studies that you've set your sights on and I hope the last year or two has been successful and productive time for you. We must acknowledge that you've graduated from university at a time when the world needs all the knowledge, skills, passion and commitment it can muster to tackle some really big challenges. And this includes climate emergency we're facing. As COP26 hosted in Glasgow showed us, urgent action is required and global collaboration and inventiveness is key to creating and implementing the solutions to this crisis. Our university is working across all of our faculties now and disciplines to address the technological, scientific, economic, educational and societal challenges we face 
to reduce our impact on the planet that sustains us. And realising these solutions forms the essence of Strathclyde's mission to make the world better educated, more prosperous, healthier, fair and secure, and to deliver against the UN's sustainable development goals. If the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us anything, it's a central and crucial role that science and universities play in helping us overcome challenges. It was science, working with researchers at university, that delivered the vaccines for COVID-19 in record time. And it's science and education that will help us address our other challenges too. Strathclyde Business School has many achievements to be proud of, including Professor Eleanor Shaw, Associate Principal, who's been awarded an Order of the British Empire, OBE, for services to entrepreneurship and education. Professor Shaw has more than 25 years experience in delivering entrepreneurship and education around the world and has helped transform the university's approach to entrepreneurial teaching, research and innovation to drive inclusive economic growth in Scotland and the UK. And a University of Strath Strathclyde alumna and two visiting professors at the university have been appointed to a council of business leaders established to support economic growth in the UK. Alumna Anita Fru, who just happens to be chair of Rolls-Royce, is among the 28 members of the business council, along with fellow alumna, Dr. Lena Wilson, chair of AGS Airports and Picton Property, and a visiting professor in Strathclyde Business School. And Keith Anderson, chief executive of Scottish Power and visiting professor in Strathclyde's Department of Accounting and Finance. The council, launched by Prime Minister Boris Johnson and co-chaired by Chancellor Rishi Sunak, will work in partnership with the UK government, helping to drive a high productivity, high growth economy over the next 12 months and level up local economies around the country. And Strathclyde Business School has been ranked in the top 95 European business schools in the latest ranking from the Financial Times. Ranking 53rd overall, Strathclyde is one of 19 UK business schools to be ranked and one of only three in Scotland. And this ranking, which was published on December the 6th last year, is based on the business school's performance in the Financial Times other ranking, specifically Global MBA, Executive MBA, and Masters in Management in 2021, and the, the FT's Executive Education ranking in 2020. Strathclyde Business School's MSc in Finance programme has been ranked once again in the Financial Times 2021 ranking of the top 55 pre-experience finance programmes. And the top 55 programmes were ranked with just 12 schools in the UK, including in the international ranking, which is produced annually. And Strathclyde, by the way, moved up the ranking this year and was 49th overall. Now, when former US President Barack Obama visited our campus in November last year, during his visit to COP26, his message to the waiting crowds was simple. As he paused on the steps of the learning and teaching building, which we're going to shortly, he shouted, get active. You know, that's a rallying call that many of us can relate to. And one of them encapsulates the can-do attitude of our Strathclyde community. Strathclyde is an institution where freedom of thought is encouraged and valued. An institution exemplified by tolerance and inclusivity. And one which seeks to play a significant role in shaping the world we live in. Through our teaching, research and through you, our graduates. We hope that you use the knowledge and wisdom you've gained at Strathclyde to play your part in bringing people together, to find common ground in our greater humanity and to work together to build a brighter future, demonstrating Strathclyde's socially progressive values and ethos of tolerance, pluralism and a desire to make a positive difference. And you know, as Strathclyde graduates, you can champion knowledge, address social justice, question inappropriate behaviours and actions, including by those in authority to help shape a better world. By the way, we hope you'll continue to stay in touch with us. Let us know how you're getting on 
and continues to contribute to Strathclyde. It's through the involvement of our alumni that we can provide a first-class education student experience for you. So we now ask if you think about those who will follow you. But hey, now's the time to celebrate your achievements with your friends and loved ones. So on behalf of the University of Strathclyde, congratulations again to each and every one of you. And I wish you all every success in the future. Thank you. I now formally declare this congregation closed. I would like to invite you to join the academic procession and ask families and friends please to remain in the hall until the procession has left the building and then join us in the learning and teaching building up the hill for refreshments. Could I ask you please to be upstanding?